Hello, I'm Giuliano. I also work in the Android systems team, uh, actually for Matthias, and uh, we're developing SCG, which is an ABI tooling project um, as part of AOSP. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the ideas of STG and really I'm looking for feedback as to whether people think this is their good ideas and also to hear what people really want from their ABI monitoring. So what's ABI monitoring? ABI monitoring, I think of it as type checking for binary objects. So we need to type check a binary object at build time against something, an ABI representation. And the ABI representation has to be produced from some other information, some ABI information source. And the sources we currently have are things like ELF, Dwarf, but there are also other things like BTF and CTF. So I'm going to show you some ABI information sources and lead into how I think we should be doing things with graphs. So this is uh, BTF for a very small uh, <laughs> um, piece of software with two functions. Um, the BTF information we get has type information, function types, and functions. And uh, okay, so how does this look like a graph? Well, we have some nodes. Yeah, I put boxes around them, so they're nodes. Um, and, <laughs> and obviously there, there's quite a lot of extra information attached to each node, like size and number of arguments and whether a function is static linkage or not. And, uh, but we can just call those graph labels, right? So if this, if this is a graph, those are the graph labels. And uh, those are the edges. So in this case, we have edges for return types and edges linking uh, functions to their types. In fact, we have two identical function types, but that's just what GCC did. Um, right, again, but there are also different types of edges. And, but we can just say, if we have a different type of edge, well, that's just a different label on our uh, edge in the graph. Uh, CTF is very similar to BTF, um, but what about ELF and DWARF? So ELF has symbol information, DWARF has type information, as well as almost everything else in the world. Um, and we have some nodes, we have some symbols, we have some types. So on the left-hand side, we have two symbols, and on the right-hand side, we have a function declaration, the int type, and another function declaration. And the edges between them are things like, uh, this function has this type, or this symbol happens to be at this offset in this section. And that links together elf and dwarf. Um, so Lib Abigail processes Elf and Dwarf and produces an XML representation of ABIs. It's what that looks like for the same program. Again, we have uh, a couple of nodes for symbols, a couple of nodes for uh, function declarations and the int type there in the middle. And there are edges expressed through XML attributes. Um, okay. But um, in all of the documentation for BTF, CTF and Lib Abigail, and dwarf, the word graph is only mentioned once, and that's in the dwarf documentation, which helpfully says that the dwarf tree is actually a graph. Okay, um, so this is, this is how I feel things are. ABI representations are graphs. We have nodes for symbols, structs, functions, all sorts of other things, and we have all sorts of different kinds of edges. Um, okay, uh, but actually when we compare ABIs, we're comparing pairs of nodes and following pairs of edges. So actually we're building a comparison graph or in the end, a, a diff graph. And they're, they're, you know, those things are also graphs, um, different kinds of edges and nodes, but nevertheless. Why am I harping on about graphs? Um, well, ABI entities don't necessarily have a natural identifier. You can think of all the anonymous structs and members in the kernel, for example. Um, uh, there, even as something as simple as a pointer, are we going to name it according to its type? That involves following edges to name things. So things don't live in a nice flat namespace. Well, symbols, I suppose, do, but most things don't. Um, and connectivity is really important. We want to know what things depend on other things, which symbols are impacted if this type is changed, for example. And um, cyclic dependencies between types are really common. So the fact that this is a graph rather than a tree is, is quite significant. And just to recap, these are the kinds of graphs I mean. Graphs have nodes with labels uh, and edges with labels. And we need to start somewhere when we do a comparison. So uh, typically we start with a symbol table and compare all the symbols. 
And so we just need an edge to each symbol. And that's my mental model for, for thinking about ABI representations, even though there are multiple concrete representations of, out there. So this is what I hope is true. ABI representations and their comparisons are graphs. With a small number of graph algorithms and graph transformations, we can solve all or nearly all of the difficult parts of ABI monitoring. And if we can solve the problems just for sort of label graphs, then we can solve them for these more complex, concrete ABI representations. And we can work on the pieces independently, we can share our work, we can prove our work, we can unit test our work. Um, this is what I hope is true. I believe at least the first part is definitely true. So, and that's because we implemented a graph comparison algorithm within STG. Uh, it uses a very simple idea of local equivalence of nodes. If you're comparing one struct type with another struct type, it does the obvious thing. Uh, and we have to follow edges in the graph in order to compare things that that struct might depend on. So it knows how to find matching edge labels and follows them and then does more work. But of course, in a graph data structure, that would be an infinite recursion. So uh, the algorithm also knows about connectivity, knows when to stop recursing. And the end result is how we have a global equivalence of nodes or a, if you like, a diff generation algorithm that runs in linear time on, on ABI graphs that can be hundreds of thousands of nodes in size. So we've kind of solved, at least with, you know, to my satisfaction within SDG, the problem of ABI equivalence checking and diff generation. But there's plenty more to do in the ABI space, including things like uh, ABI graph deduplication. So a lot of the really interesting things that happen within libctf and libabigail are how to take, say, raw debug information, which has massive redundancy, and compress it into a graph with no redundancy. And we haven't solved that yet within STG. Um, but there are also other things that don't quite fit into this model of everything is an immutable graph. You know, what if we want to only compare a, and I know people do this, only want to compare a subset of an ABI, say, only care about these symbols, or perhaps we've got graphs which still contain four declarations, but also contain definitions for certain types. We want to be able to resolve those. We also have wonderful things in the C language, like volatile const being the same as const volatile, but having two distinct representations in dwarf. And of course, type thefts means we have many potentially names for the same types. And we have even more fun things like useless qualifiers on function parameters leading to distinct representations of the type for the same thing, and we need to resolve those. I uh, will skip the last one because it will take too long to talk about. If anyone knows what it is, they can talk to me afterwards. Um, but graphs aren't everything. So in SGG, we would ideally like a text format that gives us something suitable for version control. At the moment, we're using XML. It's OK. But really, we want a format that, where we have minimal ABI changes causing really minimal textual diffs, so that it's friendly to human readers, it's friendly to Garrett, it's friendly to diff and merge. Um, when we want to talk about ABI diffs, we would like natural language descriptions of what's going on, so that people understand that you know, a certain type in a certain place has been affected by something. Um, so context is really important when talking about ABI breaks and, and changes. And at least LibAbigail uh, supports the idea that maybe we want to selectively suppress certain kinds of diff, which in the graph world translates into how do you identify a node in a graph if it doesn't have a stable name? You know, how do you say, I only care about diffs applying to this certain thing? So maybe there's something we need to do in terms of query expressions so we can identify subsets, subsets of nodes and graphs. Uh, and there are more things we might want to do that don't sort of strictly fit in, in the model I was talking about. Um, but anyway, this is how much we've done. Uh, we can load BTF into STG. We can load libabigail XML into STG. We have a uh, comparison algorithm which runs in well, very um, predictable time. And we produce reasonably readable uh, diff reports. But there's plenty more to do. And the next steps are to work on Elf and Dwarf and implement some of those transformations to 
to transform graphs rather than make our comparison algorithms more complicated. Uh, so ideally, if there is only one unique representation for an ABI, that's ideal. It means we can use purely structural graph comparison to work out if ABIs are the same. And we still haven't got a format that is perfect for version control. Uh, it may not exist, but we're going to try. Any questions? Any feedback? What would you like from your ABI tooling? <laughs> Um, do, do you have any way to deal with uh, functions that sort of hide their type? So, like a function might take in a void pointer and then immediately cast it to something else? No. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, that's a very hard problem. I think the only way to do, solve it would be with uh, basically reconstructing the type information, which would require sort of data flow analysis within the compiler or something like that. Uh, I'd just like to notice, note an equally hideous variant of this which I ran into in the kernel when working on the CTF speed up machinery, which is that there are cases in which you have a single uh, uh, forward declaration, a plate struct type def, with no concrete definition, and all the users cast it to something else. Uh, that I don't think you can do automatically, you'd need some sort of annotation. Forward declarations are a significant issue, even with what we have now for the kernel. I, mean. um, I would love to sit down with someone who has really good ideas about <laughs> all the different possible ways they can cause problems. Um, yes. Thank you, then.